Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com The San Diego Council on Literacy brings you Literacy for All with your host, Jose Cruz. Hi, I'm Jose Cruz, and you're listening to Literacy for All on WS Radio. Our guest is Jeff Weeman. He's the executive director of Angels Foster Family Network. Jeff, tell us um, just the general impression that people have when they're talking about foster care and foster children. What is their impression of, of what what that is. It's quite interesting as I go out and speak around the community. When I say the term foster child, a lot of people immediately think juvenile delinquent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the only delinquents in that child's life were the adults that caused him him or her to come into care. And so there's just kind of a general negative perception out there of foster children, foster parents. And a lot of that is because people get their information straight from television shows, Law and Order, you know, Criminal right. Intent, Hallmark yep. Channel, and it just kind of vilifies foster parents, which is not the case. Right. And it's so great to how many, do you know how many foster parents are out there right now? I think anywhere in San Diego County, there's over 1,000 to maybe 1,200. Mm. At my agency, we have roughly 60 to 65 families okay. that foster. Very good. And I would have thought there were more people because it seems like there's a big demand. Am I correct? There's a huge demand. I mean, mm-hmm. last year alone, we turned away over 100 kids because we didn't have enough family. And you would think in a community of 3 million people with a million families that it wouldn't be that hard to find a couple hundred that right. would step up to foster. Right. You know, in, in our, the literacy network, the, my, the world I live in, and yeah. we try to be seamless, uh, we care about uh, uh, development. We care about learning. Uh, but we also know that there's certain fundamentals that have to be in place for us to be impactful with the work that we're doing. What happens when we don't appropriately care for children in foster care, and what happens when we do? Well, first of all, that's why it's a, it's the ideal partnership for our two agencies mm-hmm. to be talking to each other because early reading to children is so critical to brain development and growth, mm-hmm. and it just helps so much with language development. We actually... Um, require all of our families to read consistently to the kids in their care, and we know that just makes a huge difference. Now, if a child doesn't come into high-quality foster care, later on in life they'll have higher rates of um, depression, mental illness, Mm -hmm. anxiety, which later on in life causes a whole host of problems, and that's why we stand in that gap. Very good. So what do you provide, like, um, certainly orientation and screening for foster parents, uh, a training? Is there such a thing as a foster parent training? Yes. Every family that comes through our doors uh, goes through extensive training on what we call trauma-informed care. And I'm not a clinician. I'm a dad. And mm-hmm. I look at trauma-informed care as, as simply connecting the dots that cause the child to melt down or exhibit a certain behavior and then walking it backwards. I liken foster care when I explain it to foster parents is you've come in at the end of the movie and the credits are rolling by and you see the end. Your job as a foster parent is to roll that movie backwards, figure out who all the main players were, the themes, and what went on, because oftentimes you don't know any of that when you pick up a foster child. Man, so there's a, it's, a, it's a big job, an important job, a reporting job. Is it a job? Um, it could be a job, but I think more it's, it touches the heart. You come in and you go, you see a child in need, and if you have a love of children, whether you have your own children or not, you just want to take them in and care for them because it's so amazing. What my wife and I and my family look back on today, our foster son was only in our home for four and a half months. Mm-hmm. Yet today at five years of age, we see things in him. We see behaviors. We see mannerisms that could have only come from us. And he was only there starting at the age of six weeks. So that's how impactful those early years are in a positive, loving environment and how it makes right. a huge difference. And you can't get those back quite often. I mean, the, that, those are the crucial years, the zero to three, zero to four. And so if you've invested there, and it sounds like you have, uh, then good things are happening. There's a, a foundation there that maybe you can't take away. That's exactly right. We know from research that you know 99% of your brain's connections happen in the first three years, and mm-hmm. that's why it's critical. And if we don't do that, then later on in life, most often kids in foster care that had a bad experience don't graduate from high school. If you don't graduate from high school, you never earn enough in wages and the taxes on those wages will never, ever even repay your schooling, let alone the foster care. So it's, it's an economic decision. We've got to take care of these kids early on. We've got to get them through high school. Once we do that, then we know that's the best start they can have. That's a great investment. 
Uh, tell us maybe uh, an example or story where uh, you did a match uh, for a family. Like, is it maybe matching? And uh, and just the number of things fell into play with the resources where they weren't there before, where reading was involved, books, as well as other things that are stimulating, that need to be stimulating in, the, in that age time. I mean, I'll take our own foster son because when he came into our home at first, for the first three weeks, he didn't cry, he didn't coo, he didn't whimper, he mm. didn't do anything. It was He was ashen white because he was in so much shock. And as he learned to trust us and bond with us and as we held him and as we cared for him and we fed him on a schedule, it's this amazing thing that happens with kids this age is that at one point it's like a switch flips in their brain and his eyes opened up, his heart opened up, and he started screaming. And you may think, well, oh, no, yeah. but actually that's a great thing because right. he trusted us. Yeah. And all we did was hold him, care for him, and yeah. love on him. So at that early of age you can see um, – some a, a negative impact on a child, it's going to come out. I mean, what, did you say you started at four months? We started at six weeks of age. Six, oh, my goodness. I've I got to listen better. Yeah. Six weeks. Yeah. yeah, so that's like that's a baby, and you're seeing things already not working the way that, that they need to be. Exactly, and it's amazing. I think we far underestimate the ability of even infants to recognize things that are going on and around them. Mm-hmm. And I'll give you an example. If there's domestic violence in a home between a mom and a dad and there's been something going on like that, you can usually watch the child the first time that they see that parent after they've been placed into foster care mm-hmm. and how they react. Yeah. And they can usually give a key indication on who was the one that was the aggressor. Boy, And it's just amazing to see. Well, you know, we're, uh, I guess we don't realize just how much children, adults, the more children are sponges, they absorb, they experience, they react, they remember, uh, and they're, they're affected by what's taking a place in their environment at a very young age. They are, and mm-hmm. it's just amazing. And the other amazing thing about kids this age is that they're so resilient mm-hmm. that if they have been traumatized early on, that when you put them in the right environment, you get the right family, you get the right love and care, mm-hmm. they'll bounce back. And we're able to mitigate most of those initial traumas. Not all, but yeah. most. Mm-hmm. And granted, all of us have experienced some sort of trauma at any age. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, there, are, I guess there are different ways, as you mentioned the movie, The End, etc., there are different ways, not that any story ever ends, it's not a happily ever after, but certainly in the work that you're doing, there are different ways that a story can have a, in a sense, a happy ending with, with either an adoption or a mom and dad getting it together and the child going into a, a, a home that maybe previously wasn't a good place to be. Um, what, is, what is the percentage of adoptions that happen? What is the percentage of, of kids, come, if you can, uh, mm-hmm. uh, who, are, who are able to go back home and, and hopefully live, live lives where, where there, there is stability? Right. The most proud thing I am of my agency is the fact that for 93% of the kids that come through our doors, we're the last placement in foster care. Mm-hmm. That means they stick with us, they stay with us until they either go back to their family or they are adopted. The remaining 7% were usually the second to the last stop. And that's where they usually leave us to go be with another sibling that's already in foster care. Yeah. Now, out of that 93%, it's typically about 60 to 65% that'll go back to their family. And that's either mom and dad, mm-hmm. um, that's aunt, uncles, grandmas, grandpas. And then the remaining percentage is they go out for adoption. And that number is always shifting. I mean, we have no control over that. Right. It's largely dependent on the parents of uh-huh. the child getting their acts back together and getting their lives back in order. Mm-hmm. But adoption is possible through foster care, but that's not the focus. The Very focus good. is on getting them back to their family. Well, you know, just going back to our impressions of foster care, you know, I hear it and have heard it over a long period of time. When I hear foster care, foster children, et cetera, I'm hearing about the uh, 16, 17-year-olds who are getting ready to leave a foster mm-hmm. care and then have to go out into the world maybe with or without the resources, a place to stay, a job, a family, et cetera, you're at the other end of it. Um, what, um, what can you say about both ends of the spectrum? Well, the thing that shocks me every day is out of the 3,000 kids in foster care here in San Diego County, about 40% are five and younger. And so foster care goes birth to age 21 in the state of California, yet 40% are five and younger, and that just blows my mind. Yeah. So, that's an area that we focus on as, as an agency as a critical. So we only do five and younger. 
there is a huge need for foster parents also for kids six and up. Mm -hmm. And that's just an amazing need. There's, you know, we've also found and our organization was founded on the premise that the older kids usually have been in foster care since a young age. And there have been a lot of things that could have been done early on to help them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you have the love for a child and you want an older child, there are many agencies here in town that can help you. You know, Just In Time is a great organization uh -huh. that helps kids transition out. There are many other agencies, Walden Family Services, Koinonia, Kamalihi, you know, so many that focus on the older kids as well. And we partner very closely with them. So any family that comes through our door and express an interest in an older child, we send them their way. So when you talk about the Angels Family Foster Network, is there an actual network? Is that what you're describing? We describe it as a network for uh, our families because it's not just a relationship ah. between us and our parents. Yes. We foster a relationship amongst all of our families so that if there's a crisis that somebody needs help, somebody needs short-term daycare, you know, maybe there's about a medical emergency in a foster family mm -hmm. that we all come together and we support that family. And that's the truly amazing thing. Our parents come from all walks of life. We have retirees. We have single parents. We have dual income parents, military families, and it all works. Very good. I want to give you the opportunity to put your website out there, tell people what you need. Uh, and again, this is Jeff Weeman. He's the executive director of the Angels Foster Family Network. How can we help you do what you're doing? The best thing you can do is go to our website, which is angelsfoster.org. You can find us on the web. The other uh, website you can go to is San Diego Foster Family Agencies.com, and that lists all the agencies that do fostering here in San Diego. Very good. Jeff, thanks for joining us on our show. This is Literacy for All Radio. On WS Radio, we are the worldwide leader in Internet talk. Nowadays, internet devices are an integral part of your home. Everyone in your family has a smartphone, tablet, or a computer. Life is easier knowing that all your devices are secured and your family can surf the internet carefree. ESET Multi-Device Security Pack does just that. One license for all your devices. With ESET, it's simple to stay protected and save money. Enjoy safer technology with ESET Multi-Device Security Pack at ESET.com. That's E-S-E-T dot com. On the internet, your business's reputation can be unjustly destroyed in an instant. Don't wait for that to happen. Building and marketing your five-star reputation can increase your business by as much as 19%. Take control of your reputation and have the five-star reputation you deserve with Reputation Marketing Solutions by DSI Development. Become the go-to company by visiting 5starrepmarketing.com. The number 5starrepmarketing.com. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit moesguitars.com or their Facebook page, mozeguitars.com, 619-698-1185. Tired of presentations with no impact, no inspiration, and no traction? Do dull speakers have you and your team disengaged and distracted by smartphones? Christopher McAuliffe brings energy, insights, and two decades of experience delivered with punch, humor, and heart. Your team will leave energized, uplifted, and with a sense of purpose. Visit ChristopherMcAuliffe.com to bring some heat to your next speaking engagement. M-C-A-U-L-I-F-F-E. ChristopherMcAuliffe.com. Nowadays, Internet devices are an integral part of your home. Everyone in your family has a smartphone, tablet, or a computer. Life is easier knowing that all your devices are secured and your family can surf the Internet carefree. ESET Multi-Device Security Pack does just that. One license for all your devices. With ESET, it's simple to stay protected and save money. Enjoy safer technology with ESET Multi-Device Security Pack at ESET.com. That's E-S-E-T dot com. Tired of presentations with no impact, no inspiration, and no traction? Do dull speakers have you and your team disengaged and distracted by smartphones? Christopher McAuliffe brings energy, insights, and two decades of experience delivered with punch, humor, and heart. Your team will leave energized, uplifted, and with a sense of purpose. 
Visit ChristopherMcAuliffe.com to bring some heat to your next speaking engagement. M-C-A-U-L-I-F-F-E. ChristopherMcAuliffe.com.